This week on Calypso Showcase, we journey down to Shagville, a fitting setting for a composer, the merchant, known for his prolific compositions, beautiful melodies, a tune spinner. This is the type of setting that he likes for his reminiscences, for his compositions, coming up with his new melodies. And it's really a pleasure to be talking today with Dennis Franklin Williams, the merchant on Calypso Showcase. Welcome, merchant. Uh, happy to be here with you, Alvin. Well, of course, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, the name merchant, a vendor of songs of sort. But where did uh, you get a merchant? Well, would you believe it came from Merchant of Venice, reading the story, Merchant of Venice. That is where the name actually came from. Shakespeare with Portia yeah. and yeah, Shylock yeah, yeah. and all these people. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. Um, but before we get into the, the Calypso part of you, let's talk a little bit about your early childhood, your formative years. Well, what can I say? I grew up in the open home, which I believe was an opportunity for me to learn this instrument, you know? Uh, it wasn't bad. Due to my parents died early, you know, an early stage, mother and father, and I was placed in the homes. But uh, it wasn't wasted, you know. The years wasn't wasted. Most people who spend time in the orphanage develop uh, a sort of uh, opportunity to learn to read and write music. Did you opt for that angle? No, never did. Unfortunately, I, I grew up with, with, with uh, great musicians like uh, Roy Cape and Ron Berridge and Fortuné Reese and these fellas, but uh, I watched them learn music, you know, and I never, I never, up to this day, no one note <laughs> or, you know, I can't even read my fretboard and my guitar, you know, but. So how do you play the guitar? Well, by ear. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what? So, so what do you go through when it comes to, say, composing a tune? Uh, how do you go about um, recording what you you have composed? Well, um, of course, I begin. Uh, well, everybody have a pattern, right? The, uh, the different composers, I, I guess, like GB and the Beans and these these guys have a pattern, right? I do have a pattern. I I compose. I, I get the verses first, or the chorus first, the melody first. Anything comes first. You know, and I remember my fingerings on the guitar, and you know, God help have a good memory. I don't forget, you know, but I tell you what key I in and what is I, I, I never reach that. You know? How do you approach your lyrics? Well, again, you wouldn't believe that. I hardly do any reading at all, you know. The lyrics just comes, you know. Uh, most of the times I create, uh, everything comes from my head, you know, I create a story for myself, you know, like uh, Umbayao and these things, you know, comes from the head, you know, I don't read, really, I, I, I believe that, um, I just call it cheating, you know, <laughs> <laughs> looking for something and then making a song on it, a, a, a real composer, you know, you just send out your thoughts and, you know, you grab something and that's it, you know, that's how I do it. The first time I saw you on a stage was at the Princess Building, singing a song, and I have to um, call it by its correct name, C A R N I V A L. Carnival, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that was my, that was uh, my second year, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the fourth year at Kitchener, uh, the, the Princess Building. I sang a song called um, "Dreams of Unity," mm -hmm. and then uh, the, 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 that was the fourth year. The second year. Can you remember anything of "Dreams of Unity"? No, unfortunately, no. Mm -hmm. But um, the second year, Carnival. You know, um, I'm well prepared for that song because uh, I get a, 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 a carpenter, a joiner fellow to make a board for me uh -huh. and, and mark the letters C-A-R-N-I-V-A-L. And I, I, I place, what I did, what I composed the song is, how I composed the song is, uh, I placed a meaning to each letter in the word, mm -hmm. Carnival. Each chorus, the, songs had four, the song had four choruses and each time I spelled Carnival differently, you know. Mm -hmm. Each C was for a different meaning. C for costumes, colors, you know. Like that. Any part of that? <laughs> I can't remember a thing from that. Album. Amazing. <laughs> I remember that was just you would used to dress up like a teacher and give us, you know. C A R N I V L spells carnival. The world's greatest festival, which of course is bacchanal. 
Yeah. Something like that. But I, 1976, <laughs> eh? <laughs> Is that yeah, yeah. so? Your career started in 1975. Yeah, yeah. 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 Because the following year, out of the blue, you dropped a couple of media releases on, on us. One of them was Umbaya. Umbaya. Yeah, well, that was a... Well, I said something that's not to take back my word, because that was a... Well, it was a dream, actually. I just elaborated on it. It was a dream I really had, yeah? And, um... Unfortunately, I, I, I had a matter. I had a matter, unfortunately, pending the, the courts. And the same day, the matter was the same day that the record released, you know. So it's a record that, that, that uh, I will always remember. And the flip side of that was um, Let No Man Judge. Let No Man Judge. Yeah, no man well, judge. Umba, yeah, it was one of my favorites. I always remember the first line, yeah. I dreamt I was in yeah, Africa. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure you could give us your yeah, yeah, verse yeah, and chorus of that. Yeah. I dream I was in Africa And I was a warrior Hunting lion and tiger, I was brave like my forefather. And when the darkness gathered, we sit around a fire, telling of the bravery and courage of our great ancestors. And we chanting, Umbaya, ya, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> now, let no man judge, though. I mean, uh, I think this was you talking yeah, to the yeah. public and um, the, the lyrics in that. Again, here, I think what you said before now begins to make sense to me, that you were saying something that was just in you and putting it back out in song. It wasn't something you'd read in a book or heard on the radio. And I don't know if you could remember some of the words, because I think a lot of people earn some... You, you earned your respect after you sang that song. Don't judge a man by what he used to be Or his ways of long ago Instead let us look at what he is now And could be tomorrow Everybody deserves a chance in life I'm sure you would agree don't try and condemn a person just so It's cruel and ugly If you see a man, you know that was Let me <laughs> If you see a man, you know that was bad Turn in and you leap, well, you should feel glad Courage and help him to get along But don't try your best to drag him back down Spread a man that wrong Excellent, one of your best compositions if I may say so well. <laughs> Now the following year, a high point in your, in your career Norman, is that you? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well actually that was, um, that was a movie showing Mm -hmm. By at the Strand Cinema, uh, Norman is that you with Red Fox? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, I just um, I went to the Strand Cinema night, and it wasn't even showing the movie. You know, they were showing a, a they showed the intro, the preview, and um, when the theater where I left, I on my way straight home, I keep seeing this thing, Norman, and um, and I come up with a uh, Norman was my good partner. To me, he was like a brother. A jack of all trades, a very good sportsman. A real heavy dude, all the girls like Norman. Then he left and went away to one next country. And when he came back, it was a different story. He walking and shaking the hips, wearing earrings and rose and lips. What he did to himself, I don't know. But he really changed up for so Wearing a tight, tight pants And a handbag in his hand I say, no, this ain't true And he wearing makeup too So I ask him No man, is that you? Tell me, tell me No man, is that you? Because I really want to know No man, oh, yo, 
Sunday morning in the market. I see Norman with one big basket. People start to gather wrong watching at him. Everything so dear, Norman start complaining. Just know what they expect we housewives to do. And them vendors over doing this for true. Mr. Please, if you don't mind, give me a bunch of crystals and some time. Let me look to reach back home before me man think I gone and room. I don't know what he put here, but they pointing in the air. From behind he looking well, believe me I couldn't tell. So ask him. No man, is that you? Tell me, tell me. No man, is that you? Because I really want to know. No man, is that you? Ay, ay, ay. I want to know no man. Is that you? <laughs> Still song sweet as yeah, ever. That was my first that was my first hit. Yeah, that was the first time people get to really to know who is Mochant, you know. You sang another song about the children, teach the children or something like that. Yeah, I was unfortunate. I can't remember that one. Yeah, that yeah. I sung that together with Norman. Yeah. That's the first time I got it. We went all the way to the finals, yeah, to the finals with it. Yeah. 1978. Yeah, yeah. The children of today are the of tomorrow. So in them more interest we have to show We must try to build a foundation For our young generation For it concerns the future of this nation So I beg you to teach the children Try teach the children And show them, don't even let them After 1978, where was the merchant going in terms of his career? Well, it wasn't going bad. Uh, 78, 79, I had a, I did an album, 79. Uh, we think about the children, Dr. Soka, Dr. Soka album, that was the name of the album. Well, that had a number of big hits yeah, on it. Uh, think about the children was think one that was yeah. very uh, popular. And a uh, driver, taxi talk. Taxi talk, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Driver, give me a little taste of that. <laughs> Traveling in a taxi yesterday evening. And all of a sudden I start to dig something. With the female passengers especially. When they want the driver to stop, the things they say does amaze me. Driver, I go take it here. Driver. Give me over there, he's right by the gateway. I think it is day, just by the corner. They know they fly over, driver. <laughs> <laughs> now, in fact, that was a monster album. Yeah, I remember almost yeah, every yeah, single yeah. tune on that album. Dr. Soka himself was yeah. one of the hits. Uh, well, I, I, that, that year I got, I made it to the semi finals, but not to the finals. Mm -hmm. I sang, um, think about the children, and that same. Uh, I think that I remember it here good because Chogdas was left out also. Mm -hmm. Chogdas, um, I think he, he and the judges had a little riff, you know. Mm -hmm. But I got left out that year. I think that the year Stalin won with Caribbean Man. Coming in 1979, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, Barataria Sweet, was that on that album too? 
No, but the record was on, was on the, on that, the next album. That that's one of your, your yeah. other and sweet I numbers. Don't know, I can't remember at all at all. Mm-hmm. 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 Right, sweet but money have no sweeter. But money have no sweeter. There was the body's hardest. That night up in the caravan. When they hit the stage, the crowd went wild in opera. They keep calling out for more. Mondi Diablo, oh you sweet so no no. Mon Diablo, oh you sweet so. <laughs> you know, but yeah. why do you think that a person like yourself who composes so many beautiful melodies tend to at times forget your own material? Uh, maybe too much. <laughs> maybe I, I compose it too much. You see now I I don't use a I don't use a cut most of the composers or college students do. Not that uh, you know that I never go to the trouble of, of putting it. I had already, you know, and the spoil and whatnot, but right now having a cassette player does hinder me. I, I get accustomed now to just writing my songs, remember it here, write it down, and that's it, you know. I'll plant my fingers here and remember the chord that I'll go to sleep and wake up in the morning. And I might remember the melody, mm-hmm. but I remember when I, when I put my finger on and play it up and down, play until the melody come right back. Yeah. That is it, you know. Now, 1984. You sang a tune, again, it was another one of those media releases. But if, if there was a, I, I think, uh, independence competition that year, nobody could have beaten you. Wow. Let us build a nation oh, together. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, um, that was um, produced by uh, these fellas, uh, Network, Brother Resistance. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was the, the, these fellas that produced the record for me. At that time, I was, like, I didn't really have a producer, you know, mm-hmm. at hand. And these fellas always liked my work and thing, you know. And, me and these boys get along in a special kind of a way, you know. I do a lot of shows, I travel together with them and things, London. How did you come to write that tune? Well, um, there was a afternoon, a Sunday, Sunday after lunch, I was uh, up on uh, Picton, John John, by the big water tanks on them, you know, and up on the hill, and I stand up looking out, you know, and the whole thing just come, you know. The nation, you know, how beautiful this place is now, boy. I know everything just come on, you know. Now the election back and now die away. In short, this is what I have to say. Let us forget spites and grudges and concentrate. Come, let us sit and try to relate. Because now, more than ever, we must show. Discipline, tolerance, and production To build a strong and better nation I say, that is the main foundation So, come let us go hand in hand Because this is our land Come my brother, come my sister And let us build a nation together Remember the key to success is working hard For our country we must have regard Forget all your differences, let we start to build And on what to progress we surely will Because now more than ever we must show Discipline, tolerance and production to build a strong and better nation I say that is the main foundation so come let us go hand in hand because this is our land come my brother come my sister and let us build a nation together Yeah, um, that year there was a new tent called Irie. 
that was run by Stalin right. and uh, Street. Superior. <laughs> that is where I was at, yeah. yeah I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I recall it so then, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, 1985. I remember, in fact, in an interview you had in 1984 with Dave Elcock, you told them, next year, 1985, going to be my year, and I hope the other fellas ready. Yeah, yeah. And he gave him a little taste. You said, I have a tune called Pan in Danger, and I think yeah, that's yeah, going to yeah. do it. Yeah, and yeah. so said, so done. <laughs> What an invention It should be the pride of our nation Steel band music The world know about it And if we invent it So why should we disregard it But what a scene Lord it has me grieving Why is the steel band of us Uncle Street I could tell you So when you hear in 1992 people talking about making Pan the national instrument, after you sang that since 1985, <laughs> how do you feel? Well, I feel great. I feel great. But um, I say we, we still in a little danger, you know. <laughs> yeah, the Pan. <laughs> the Pan. Uh, when I say Pan in danger, I only speaking about like how they're breaking down Pan tent all about, you know. When I see a video on the TV with um, and the Narel, and then they're not showing your books, they being seen professor. I can't, I never seen no slide with Professor, I believe. It's Andy Narell and this one, that one, you know, and that is the danger, the thing going away from me, you know. They say there's some factory somewhere in Sweden where you're pushing a drum and a thing come out. That's all I, being danger still, really thing, you know. Danger. Yeah, I say the danger. That year when you heard steel bands playing your tune, oh, how did you feel? Oh, gosh, I feel, <laughs> what? We about two bands, with all them bands playing in danger. I say, what? That tune came from the Rocket album. Yeah. And yeah. the second tune you went semi-finals with was uh, Rocket. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Connection. Real bong yeah. set. But we took Caribbean Connection you sang in the finals at the yeah. Match Ground. Yeah. But let's talk about Rocket first. Well, Rocket, um, well, I, I believe uh, when a party song is one of the hardest songs to make, you know. As I say to other composers, I don't know, GB might say different, or uh, Vins might say different, a party song. You know, where you could sing about it, a party song? So you have to look for something unique in Rocket. I see a girl stand up in a corner in a pet and she looks like she's waiting for somebody and I approach her in good and proper English. Would you like to rock it with me, you know? Like Would you like to rock it with me, baby? Now, crazy one, the road match, I hear. But um, 
some people in London, the the the, the uh, Polydor Records, some people from Polydor Records wanted the, the bad hit songs from here over in London for the carnival, and they sent a ticket for me. Not crazy, mm -hmm. because you could imagine, not knocking crazy because I'm a friend, eh? But you could imagine crazy singing Sukuya in London to a white crowd. Nobody knows where that Sukuya. <laughs> But I was talking proper English, would you like to... They was relating to that... Immediately. Immediately, you know, and that was it for me. That was a big hit for me in London. And when you yeah. went up in the finals that year, Caribbean Connection, I remember yeah, you came yeah, third yeah. in the finals that year. Yeah, a Caribbean, very, very good yeah, showing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us about um, what inspired you to write Caribbean Connection. Well, the CARICOM thing like this, CARIFESTA thing, you know. I always had that kind of thing, um, you know, the CARICOM thing. The CARICOM I find. Why I was saying in my mind that the CARICOM thing is like, CARICOM is only an exchanger. You be exchanging goods with one another and doing and that is all the time. You, know? <laughs> you really need a connection there, you know? And that would make me put, sit down and, um, and write Caribbean Connection. Hey, let's have a party. A Caribbean party. The entire region together. In one big flash of fiesta Oh mama A regional vibration I say we jamming To the songs of the Caribbean We grooving To Calypso and Stephen But the following year, I, um, a tune that um, some people looked at as the follow-up to Rockin' It, Paranoid. Oh, but I can't remember that song at all. I don't know paranoid, why. Paranoid, yeah. you stand like you're paranoid. paranoid. <laughs> you can see the whole night is you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a bad one. Uh, that, that was done in New York. Uh -huh. That was on the album called um, There Must Be A Way. A hot party now, Mama. Yeah. Hmm? That was a hot party. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, uh, that, 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 and that album had the continuation of Rocket. Yeah, I think we're rocking it. I'm rocking rocking it. it. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. Now, the following year, though, you, you put together two numbers, and I, I really, I think if I had to call another tune that I put as one of your top ten, the tune Pain. Oh, yeah. But that was big for me in London also. Surprisingly, for a slow song, because out oh, there in these places, like the London thing, they go for the party thing. But um, Pain was, um, was, a, was a nice song for me over there. When I think about the horror in South Africa The grief of all the lives that lost in India The starving millions of the world who can't get food to eat Children who has never seen party or a dream I say it hurts so bad Whoa. me sad oh my friends it brings pain 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 dong inside i feel pain deep inside i feel pain the father said unto us peace on earth goodwill not oppress and plunder segregate and kill why it is my color still remains a barrier? Can't we live in peace and harmony with each other? Oh my gosh, it hurts so bad. Oh, it makes me sad. Oh, all my friends are drinking. Pain, pain, Lord, dog inside. It 
I think that's where I make the, the semis. Semis, yeah. Yes, I made the semis there, but that I didn't get tumble down. And tumble down, yeah. <laughs> Come <Corrito> to <laughs> tumble down. <laughs> I want to apologize in advance. So if you see me behaving bad in a dance. Well, I'm not responsible for my action. Is this soccer making me show my emotion? In terms of Calypsonians that you look around and see, who are some of the people that you have looked up to, admired, or, or felt you would like to have patterned yourself along well, the uh, line? Sparrow for one. You know, me and me and the boat gets along nice. You know, he always give me a good advice. You know, and Stalin, Black Stalin, Valentino. You know, I want to other chaps. You know, but uh, I'll say Stalin in particular. Stalin in particular. Yeah, Stalin in particular. Yeah. And of some of the arrangers that you have worked with, who have you felt most comfortable with? Uh, well, boy, I work with Ed Watson. I work with um, Pelham Goddard. Uh, Less than Paul is the most comfortable. Less than Paul, yeah. He understands my music more, you know. He understands it. Uh, well, Ed to him, because Ed is the person that arranged Norman and Umbaya and these things there. Mm -hmm. But uh, Rocket and these things are Less than Paul. Pain, Less than Paul, Tumble Down, Less than Paul, you know. Mm -hmm. But Leston is, I like Leston. Do you set out to write a particular type of calypso or you just sit down and wait for vibes to come? No, well, I just, just do it, you know. I just, well, look, just now me and my friend here was, uh, me and Brian was walking up the road just now. And as I tell you, I just get that thing and I run upstairs and pick up the guitar. And, you know, it just come, it just, it just come, you know. Sometimes I lie in the night, I sleep in and I get up, you know, and something hit me and I just, just do something just you know it just keep coming all the time but now when you get a when you get a sometimes you get a melody and you get a topic and the topic don't suit the melody it has to be tailor-made it has to be like hand in glove you know sometimes i get a nice tune and i get a topic and i had to move the topic away from that tune because it didn't fit the melody i had to look for a topic to suit the melody you know so i couldn't make no cuts i didn't want to interfere with the melody yeah. so what you know now, after 1987, from a competition point of view, there was not much of the merchant, but there was a tune that, that stood out in my mind, I think it was 1989, a tune called Silver Lining, which oh, I yeah, thought that, uh, was another one yeah, of yours. Yeah, yeah, that was, um, that was my last album I did, yeah. yeah. When everything seemed to be gone, the worst thing to do is sit down and mourn. Let frustration get the better of you And make you do things you should never do You got to keep the faith You can't surrender You never know Tomorrow may be brighter Don't you know Behind every dark cloud There's a silver lining So don't give up hope now we got to keep on trying.